Before we leave the story of the Buddha, I just want to touch on a couple of points. At one level, we can look at the life of Prince Siddhartha and see it as irresponsible. When the Buddha left the palace, he left behind his wife and child, Rahula. His trips outside the palace, though, have awakened him to the real human condition, how people live outside the palace. He must find the cure that leads to the cessation of suffering. He cannot find it by living a luxurious life in the palace. When we view Siddhartha's actions as not for any personal gain, but for universal gain, we can start to see the compassion in his action. They are still, let us not forget, living, the, living in the palace while Siddhartha is living the life of an ascetic. Also, he does bring his enlightenment back to the palace. Rahula becomes ordained as a monk and his aunt Maha Prajapati becomes the first nun. We can see from the three kinds of suffering and the hint at the, at the path from the mendicant, the link to the Four Noble Truths. These are the three truths about suffering and the path that leads to the cessation of suffering. Buddhism is often referred to as a middle way. We can see this in the life of the Buddha. He realised that he couldn't find enlightenment whilst living a luxurious life. After he left the palace, he also couldn't find it in the extreme aesthetic practices. The middle path can be found in the Buddha's first teaching, which in the Pali is called the Dhammakakra, the Dhammakakra Pravatana Sutra. The Buddha says, monks, these two extremes ought not to be practiced by one who has gone forth from the household life. There is addiction to indulgence of sense pleasures, which is low, coarse, the way of ordinary people, unworthy and unprofitable. And there is addiction to self-mortification, which is painful, unworthy and unprofitable. Avoiding both these extremes, the Tathagata has realised the middle path. The seed of this realisation came to the Buddha while he was a child sitting in the shade of a rose apple tree. Secluded from sensual desires, he entered into a meditation. Having entered into aesthetic practices, he, has, he had lost touch with the simple pleasure of just being, realising that this was a pleasure unrelatable to sensual pleasures. Buddha concluded that this was the root of enlightenment. As sensual grasping is not the root of, to happiness, neither was its denial. As a pleasure derived from sitting in contemplation doesn't have its roots in denial or in excess, there is no reason to fear this pleasure and there is no reason to continue extreme ascetic practices.